I know I'm the last person ever to put up a video on spoilers to Star Wars The Force Awakens, but this is a little different this time after a huge controversy on the film. Some people really despise this movie for a couple amount of reasons, which to that I say considering I have seen The Force Awakens literally 10 times in the theaters and a couple more times when it was released on Blu-ray, is that to me, since it's my opinion, that it's an extremely well-made and brilliant film. Do I think it's a masterpiece? No, it's way too early to think that, but still, I think it's a brilliant film in certain categories. And because I believe it's a brilliant film, I will cover why in a series of videos titled Defending Star Wars The Force Awakens. I will cover characters, plot devices, and other aspects as to why I find this film to be incredible and unique. And this defense will cover heavy, heavy spoilers, so if you haven't seen The Force Awakens, I highly suggest you check it out, then come back here if you have problems with it or something. Now in this very first video, I will be covering the controversy revolving around the character of Rey, and this title she's been given called a Mary Sue. So I will be covering every scene that most people had a problem with, and why I find her to be an incredible and suitable character in Star Wars. So here we go, my first episode of Defending Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now the very first scene we see of Rey is her scavenging through the remains of the Imperial Star Destroyer as she reveals her face after she gets out of the once powerful ship into the Jakku Sun. She drinks the last bit of water she has, indicating her struggle for survival as she scrounges for every single drop she has. Rey then gathers a few Imperial parts and it was just enough to cover the whole left side of her speeder. She takes very little parts she has collected, trades it for food, and goes home as a means for survival. But if you notice, she struggles at it even when she takes out the water canister containing very little water inside and consuming it as much as she can. But what I love about the whole three minute introduction is that it totally captures it being a silent film. Besides Uncle Plutt saying one quarter portion, which is unnecessary because we see that it's not that much food she gets. Through the score, sound effects, and facial expressions she makes as she's living her life on the planet Jakku, you got that feeling how long she's been there, how she dreams of getting off the planet just to embark on any journey that awaits her, or even waiting for her family. You can tell how long she's been there when you see the scratches on the wall she makes counting how long she's been there on the planet or even when she puts on the old damaged rebel helmet that she in a way dreams of becoming a hero as she looks up to the former heroes of the rebellion as the small figure she has in her home. Adding to her loneliness to show that she can really take care of herself in the junkyard of a planet, but she struggles at it too. But I really loved how her theme was a soft and gentle tone score that really represents her character deep down. If you guys haven't heard The Scavenger by the legendary John Williams, I highly suggest you listening to that last minute because it embodies how Rey's overall feeling of her loneliness and her struggle to survive on this planet. I believe her introduction was brilliant. Now, a lot of people have problems with Rey, which leads to them calling her a Mary Sue. And yes, I see reason as to why people call her that, because, oh, she's good at everything, that's not what a character is supposed to do, and Star Wars feminist propaganda, and all that stupid shit. But you also have to look how this movie explores her character through an introduction, after she meets up with BB-8, and the dialogue that dives further into her character. Now, for those who don't know what a Mary Sue is, here's the definition. A Mary Sue is a fictional character, strictly a female character, whereas the male character is considered a Gary Sue, who is viewed as the perfect character, which often compromises the integrity or believability of the story as they save the day. So what I have gathered from people on the internet who view Rey as a Mary Sue is because of her ability of doing basically everything in the movie that it makes her unbelievable as a character to the point where it annoys them. But you have to take a look on how long Rey has been on the planet Jakku through the evidence of the scratches on the wall and even the small scene where it shows her being dropped off on Jakku at a very young age. You can assume Rey was dropped off by her family roughly around 8 or 9 years old and in the movie movie, you can guesstimate that she is roughly in her early 20s or possibly late teens. So she has been fending for herself for over a decade briefly, where she has been able to learn how to feed herself, fight, and learn the many parts of how a ship is constructed. She has become an expert as a means for survival because of her situation, for a person to be on the planet for that long and she's still alive. Considering her job is to gather parts of a broken ship and turn it in for food, I believe she has vast amounts of knowledge of how a ship works. If she's able to figure out parts of a big ship like an Imperial Star Destroyer, why not know parts of a ship such as the Millennium Falcon, which is a much smaller ship as she eventually pilots later on in the movie. Do I personally believe Rey is a Mary Sue? In all honesty, no, I don't, which I'll explain why in a bit, but first I'll cover her involvement in the Millennium Falcon. 
Now, Rey's involvement with the Falcon has so much going already since there's evidence to prove that she also has vast amounts of knowledge of the Millennium Falcon when she meets up with Han Solo. In one scene, he discovers how some move milker installed a compressor to the ignition line, which puts a lot of stress on the hyperdrive. That was a direct quote from the movie, in which Rey repeats Han Solo when it gets to the line about the hyperdrive of the Millennium Falcon, which makes me question one thing. Has Rey boarded the Millennium Falcon previously? We know that Rey is a curious character as well, which is shown when she expects the sound BB-8 makes when they meet up near her home at the AT-AT, and when she later on hears the lightsaber of Anakin Skywalker calling to her. Has her curiosity led her to study the inside of the Millennium Falcon where she basically knows everything that's inside the ship and how it works? Maybe not to the point where she's able to fly it, but basically knows how it functions. For a pilot's involvement on any ship and for them to fly it, they would have to know that ship inside and out and how it functions and so on. And we know that the Millennium Falcon went from Han Solo to Duquesne and then Unker Plutt, in which Rey was working for him to bring spare parts for food. From all the parts that Rey brought from the Rebellion and Imperial scrap metal, did Unker Plutt possibly use those scraps to install upgrades to the Falcon? Or maybe not even Unker Plutt. There's a huge possibility that Rey might have even worked on the Falcon somehow because of the scene where she and Finn escaped from the First Order. She was able to pinpoint where the cockpit was, the gunner seat, and basic functions on how to start up the Falcon. She doesn't just magically know that, especially for a girl to be on Jakku for a decade at least. That's enough time for someone who deals in mechanics all day, plus to study them, to really get to know the ship. If Rey didn't board the Millennium Falcon, she wouldn't know where these things were, but since she does know, it's pretty obvious she had some experience with the iconic ship. Another reason as to why people view Rey as this Mary Sue is because Rey was able to use the Force and learn it so quickly without any real Jedi training. A lot of people were upset because her Force capacity was on the same level as Kylo Ren's in a way, a dark warrior hell-bent to prove himself to the dark side with years of training we can assume. But here we have Rey, a scavenger on the desert planet just magically knowing what the Force is and how far along she is capable of using it. The scenes that shows that she clearly has the Force is her perfect balance of allowing Finn to shoot the TIE Fighter in the Millennium Falcon when being chased by the First Order. The next one is, after her being interrogated by Kylo Ren, being able to use the Jedi mind trick on the weak-minded Stormtrooper, allowing her to escape with his dropped weapon. And lastly, her ability to use the Force to grab the lightsaber to fight Kylo Ren at the end of the film and beating him. Now me going in depth about Rey using the Force and her possible past with it has enough detail for me to make another video on it because all of it is based on theory at this point. But in summary, there could be a possibility of Rey having a strong past of her being a Force user before being sent to Jakku at a very young age. We don't know too much about the character of Rey to actually pinpoint how she was able to acquire these newly found abilities, considering she is still a mysterious character in the Star Wars universe, and The Force Awakens being the first part to a new trilogy. Which I'm sure Episode 8 will cover the backstory on how Rey was able to use the Force so quickly, which I theorize, again, this isn't confirmed and I have very little proof on how this can be true, but I highly believe that both of Rey's parents are Force users or possibly Jedi. If the theory is true as to where Luke Skywalker could possibly be her father, who is already an all-powerful Jedi after Episode 6 Return of the Jedi, maybe, just maybe, Rey's mother is also a Force user slash Jedi by the time Rey is born. Now, genetically speaking, I can assume if both Jedi who are strong in the Force, if they have a child, those genes would pass along to the offspring with them adopting that dominant trait, thus making Rey strong in the Force and possibly learning those abilities at a young age. Only counter-argument to shut this down and Luke Skywalker being her father is Rey believing Luke Skywalker being a myth after meeting up with Finn. So how can you think that your own father is a myth? There's obviously more to the story in which we'll have to watch it unfold in episode 8, but I will go more in depth on that later in the future. Another controversial moment in The Force Awakens is when Rey confronts Kylo Ren in her first lightsaber duel. Even though she does run away most of the time, but some may question, how is that a girl with no lightsaber or Jedi training is able to keep up with someone who clearly does? Which that question harkens back to when we see Rey dealing with some of her troubles on Jakku. In this scene where we have the Jakku thugs attacking Rey, we can clearly see that Rey is capable enough to hold her own in a fight with her specific and unique fighting technique. Apparently a technique so useful to her that it was able to keep her alive on Jakku for the time she has spent there, which I can assume this isn't the first time where she confronts trouble. It's indicated that Rey is still fresh in her street fighting skills as she gets to use them almost every day, whereas Kylo Ren rarely gets to use any of his training and he's still rusty in his swordsmanship. Applying to any life lesson, if you've been away from something for a long period of time, you will get rusty on. There's more to Kylo Ren and why he is that way, which again, will be a different video, but I bought the fact that a person with fresh fighting skills could stand a chance against someone who had previous training, and I'm 
sure was good at it, and ultimately defeating them. Kylo Ren was fully aware of Finn's technique because Finn trained with the First Order. Kylo Ren knows how they operate. Kylo Ren and his naivety couldn't track what Rey was able to do since she was far from what he knows, thus leading him to his defeat. Hopefully in Episode 8 when he gets his training done, he will outmatch Rey, but in the meantime, the winner is obviously Rey. Now with all these clues mixed with possible theories and speculations, considering this is the first part to a trilogy, mind you, Rey, in my opinion, has a lot of traits that a hero should do, but not to the point where it makes the movie unbelievable. I believe Rey is a suitable character in the Star Wars universe, as she is an all-around badass character with many layers to peel and to explore. Who is truly Rey's parents? Why is she so gifted with a force? Has she boarded the Millennium Falcon before? Questions you must ask before giving her the final stamp of being a Mary Sue, which could possibly be a negative comment towards her character. Now, in my views, I do not believe she is a Mary Sue for those reasons I have mentioned before. But if you do, if you still think that she's a Mary Sue, that is not a problem. Because we also have to remember, the movie is fantasy, and it's fun to discuss these certain aspects to The Force Awakens. And soon, I will release my next video dissecting the character of Finn or Kylo Ren, depending on which I get done first. I can't wait to bring that to you guys. And one more question before I leave. Do you still believe Rey is a Mary Sue? Whatever your thoughts are, leave it down below. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that social media shit down below keep in contact with me don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always may the force be with you